for now. Great. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Maloney Kamdar. I am from Real Life Trading India. Um, I came across this wonderful, wonderful company called Real Life Trading um, about four or five years ago. And Jeremy Newsom of Real Life Trading has taught me everything I know about trading. Um, and now I handle the Indian side of um, real life trading business. So I have been trading for roughly about four or five years now. Um, and I specialize mainly in, in bearish trades. I'm called the resident bear in real life trading. Um, and my presentation today I wanted to bring to you guys was is, is all about trading the trend. Now we've all heard about that. You know, we've all heard about trading the trend, trading the trend, trend, trade with the trend. But then what happens if a chart looks like this? What do you do if you're constantly just used to buying the dip, especially um, with some of the retail trading that's been happening? Some of the some of the people that are not very familiar with hedging their accounts um, and things like that. And so I thought it would be a really cool and unique perspective to bring to bring to all of you guys here and um, present to you some of the bearish trends and, and, you know, maybe find some tickers that we can truly look to short and and hedge our portfolio a little better and help our long-term holds that may hurt in at least the first quarter. Um, I don't, I don't, I truly do not expect this volatility and this turmoil to last too, too long, or I'm, I'm hoping the first quarter is where we end this, this wild craziness that's going on in the markets today. Speaking of which, what an, what an amazing, crazy day today. Um, I'm so, so thrilled to be trading for tomorrow. Um, I'm also a true, 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 day trader. I enjoy day trading a lot more than swing trading. And if I do take swing trades um, or setups, then I typically plan on holding my swings for about two weeks um, or shorter periods. And that's worked out well in the past for me. Um, so I just I just enjoy intraday trading a lot more than, than holding long-term shares. Um, I do have a long-term account separated um, from all of this, and that's that's something that I will just never touch. So anyway, um, never touch for a long time. So those are just just really long, long-term. I don't plan on using those shares for a while um, or touching my portfolio for a while. Um, so anyway, so let's get this let's get this started. Um, I come I came across a couple of tickers. Um, first of all, the the ones that I do think are are definitely or should remain on my watch list are fintech. Just everything around fintech. It's um, it's getting better. Um, with time, we're getting some of these things on a much, much cheaper prices. So I am adding slowly um, a couple of shares here and there of Square. I trade a lot with Fibs. Um, and so I added a little bit over here at the 1618 extension um, of Square. I added maybe a little bit over here. And, and the way I like to buy my long-term stuff, guys, is that I tend to do um, a pyramid. So I will buy maybe 10% um, of my position at the 1618 retracement. I will run my fibs again and see if we have another reversal and then do another 10% purchase um, just so I can keep my dollar cost average down. Um, especially in a trend like this, it is a little bit scary to get in. But these are definitely on my list to be bullish on and hold for long term. Um, so Square is one of them. And then here is another fun one that I absolutely love is PayPal. And I'm sure some of you guys have, have been through some of the other um, other moderators and, and, and I'm sure many of them might have talked about PayPal today. But PayPal to me is truly 
at a discount um, at this range. It could pull back a little bit more. This chart is not pretty looking at all. But for a long-term hold, just to dip your feet in a tiny little bit, um, and then to add along as we go higher could be a fun play on PayPal as well. Um, now, going back to the things that I truly enjoy are the bear trades. And for that, I have a fun list of things. Now, these are tickers that I have figured out that, that they have really, really high price to earning ratio. And um, they do need a pullback. They need, do need to be at a discount, um, offered at a discount. Um, some of these, some of the tickers actually, things like um, Peloton and Roku, we look at their, their charts right now and say, are they really justified for this big of a pullback? But when you truly look at their price to earning ratio, it's, it, it, it really deserves to be down here. It deserves to be brought back a little bit. Um, so it is a justified pullback in my opinion. Um, trade desk. Um, I plan on at least for the first quarter of, of this year, um, I plan on, on, I love this gap up on top on trade desk and I plan on being short on this one at least for until mid-March. Um, if I were to do fibs on this from the previous bull run, right over here, um, somewhere over here could be a good target. And that's that's essentially where I will exit my puts that I've been holding on Trade Desk. This is a weekly chart, keep in mind guys. And um, I tend to buy my puts, um, especially on a, on a choppy, environment like this, I tend to buy my puts at least six months out. So my puts expire um, in June, the ones I have on Trade Desk. And so I plan on it pulling back quite a bit um, before we actually see a correction on Trade Desk. So that's definitely on my watch list for sure. Um, there is another one that's everybody's, everybody's nightmare currently is Teladoc. Now, this trend to me speaks volumes. This kind of takes me back to the tech bubble. And um, it was fascinating to me how some of the things that just went shooting up came crashing down just as quickly, um, sometimes quicker than how, how quickly they've been shot up. So um, Teladoc is my other one that I've been keeping a very, very close eye on. Um, on the weekly chart, it just looks nasty. This is not a fun chart to be a part of, especially if you've been bag holding even over here or anywhere over here. Um, not, I'm pretty sure none of the buyers in there are, are definitely super happy. Um, so on Teladoc, I've been in these puts for a while now, um, and I do plan on exiting them somewhere over here around the 54 range is where I do look to exit. Um, I still have a lot of time left on my Teladoc puts, so I may end up holding it until end of March and see, see what, what we, where we go with it. Another one is GE. And no, this isn't isn't on my list because of today, but just, just in general, I've been doing a lot of reading on um, GE just as a company. Um, and to some, it may seem like it is on a discount and sure it could be, um, but I just don't think it is a company that can sustain itself um, with the competition and all of that that's going on around it. Um, and their pricing model is just awful. So that's another one on my on my watch list. Now, I am not a part of this trade at all. I am looking to get in bearish, but I do recognize this inverse head and shoulders action happening on the weekly chart. So I am keeping an eye out for it and see if I can get a get a get in on some of this some of this fun bear run on GE. It's just a company that's just been struggling for a while. Um, on the the charts look awful on this. But I, I do I do recognize this, so I, I am keeping a close eye on it and see where we go from there. Um, another fun one is Tandem. 
diabetic. This one has been on my watch list for quite a while. Um, and I've been looking for a pullback on some of these things because they were just so, so extended. Healthcare in general, I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna have a decent pullback um, just as the world opens up again. Um, I typically tend to look for reversals on the daily chart. And the way I look for reversals is we're trying, we're, we're doing this really fun strategy where we buy a, so let's go back to the weekly chart. I'll actually show you a good example. So this is my 10 EMA um, on the weekly chart. And the first candle that closes below the 10 EMA is where we buy puts. So if we ever close below this candle right over here on the weekly chart, or it works, it works phenomenally well. The first green candle that closes below the 10 EMA um, and we take that out, I tend to usually buy puts around that area. It worked phenomenally well on my Goldman Sachs trade, which we'll, we will go back and look at again. Um, but yeah, so I've been eyeing this. I'm waiting for this gap fill to happen and see what happens around this area on the weekly chart. And unlike some of the others, the RSI isn't so bad on this. So I feel like we, we do have quite a range to go down on. Um, I would target it around the 618 range. Um, so put fibs on here and right over here. And so the target would be somewhere in the 106 area if we do get a decent fill right below the 50% retracement. Um, that would be a, a, that's something that I'm definitely keeping a close eye on. Um, I have missed this bear run, so I'm definitely watching to get in over here, but I don't wanna chase it too, too much. Um, another fun one is Best Buy. Now, this company amazes me. I mean, you know, with all of the things that, that we can do online, I think Best Buy, if they don't come up with a better better business model or um, a better way to attract more customers into their stores, I do feel like this is a company that is going to struggle in 2022. So I'm keeping a very, very close eye on Best Buy to, and again, this is a weekly chart. So to either find an entry to go bearish on the daily or the weekly. Um, do I think it's going to go out of business in 2022? No, not really, but it is going to be something that suffers uh, for sure. It's kind of becoming a little bit out of trend. Um, and unless they adapt to a different model, I think that this is something that may not work very well for them on the, on the wave count wise as well. Um, so I do see this as wave four, five, and then ABC that's happened right now. And then we might start another bearish wave or a bullish wave. Again, I'm no one really truly knows, but if I were to guess on the weekly chart, I would hope and guess that it would go towards the bear side. Um, so I'm definitely watching this one as well um, to take a couple of bear trades in 2022. And then again, of course, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Now this one has become somewhat of a meme stock and, and I, I don't really like that too much about it, but this is again, another store that I, I do think is, is eventually gonna, another stock that I do think is eventually gonna go to zero. Um, there is, their, their business model isn't really keeping up with the trends, the current trends that we have in mind. And so for that reason, I do think that this is something that can pull back a little bit more. Um, I tend to stay away from meme stocks in general. And so for that reason, I haven't really, I haven't really touched this as much um, or shorted it on some of the, you know, the big down days. Um, but I am looking to find a decent entry in this one. I kind of see this head and shoulders happening right now on it and see if we can break down, maybe come back and retest it and then probably head lower. Um, I don't really have a specific target in mind as far as 
Bed Bath & Beyond's concerned, but I do think that it is a company that can definitely pull back in 2022, especially if we have a little bit of turmoil in the first quarter and see how things go. Um, doesn't look too, too great on the daily chart either. Um, these things are in a strong, strong bear trend. So I do think that we can get a good entry on these stocks and maybe short a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a pullback and then short that. Um, or at least I'm hoping that I do find that in 2022. Um, besides that, I've been, I've been of course watching the usuals, the Teslas and the Netflix and things like that. Um, and, and I have this, this idea of, of Tesla at, um, and when I put these fibs on, I had put these fibs on um, Square a while ago, and no one would believe me that it would pull back that much. But I, it, it is, it is possible, absolutely possible. So I'm not a buyer of Tesla in 2022. I've, you know, traded it bullish all the way up um, and let go of my long-term holds on Tesla. I do have a few shares of. Tesla long term, but still, a majority of my my shares, I've I've exited my position on it. Um, I do believe in the company. I absolutely love the company, um, but I think it's a little bit extended to the bull side, and I do think that we need a pullback. So I'm not a buyer of Tesla until it pulls back to the 50% retracement, which again might shock some of you guys and say, and, and you may really truly wonder, is it really gonna pull back to 644? Um, I am not 200% sure that it can, but if we do have a bear run on it, it it definitely could. And And, you know, you'd be surprised sometimes even a 618 is plausible to me. So I'm not a buyer on Tesla in 2022 just yet. I do think it's it's slightly extended. I'm well, I'm being kind about 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 saying it's slightly extended. I think it's it's definitely very, very extended. Um and then there is Netflix, which we we've been trading. Um, pretty much on a, on a daily basis um, lately. I am keeping an eye on this um, for swing trades and, and seeing directionally which way we can, we can potentially end up. I do think this gap really truly is valid on Netflix. Um, we are super, super extended right now towards the beer side. So I'm not looking to short it just yet. Maybe a gap fill. I'm not entirely sure if a gap even fills, but maybe a little bit to the 10 EMA on the weekly where we're a little bit extended to the beer side and then look for a rollover. Um, but these tickers I've been, I've been trading day trading and to the bear side and they've been a lot of fun. Um, here's a great example of buying your puts right below the green candle that closes below the 10 EMA. And so if you would have gone and bought puts on this week, you would have been happy. I typically tend to buy my puts um, around three to six months out, depending on where my stances on the chart. Um, now, again, on Netflix, I would not have bought, you know, year out puts. Um, right now, the chart looks kind of scary. It looks super bearish, and this is not a good chart to be looking at, if, especially if you are a owner of Netflix shares. I do plan on it pulling back up to the 10 EMA at least, and then maybe looking for a rollover. Um, I'm not sure if we would get a true, true, true retracement of the neckline of the head and shoulders on the weekly, but we will just have to watch and see where Netflix goes. Um, it, it's extended to the bear side, but it was also extended to the bull side. Um, and, and, and this just kind of speaks for itself. So these are the tickers that I have had on my watch list for 2022, and I'm definitely looking forward to trading them bearish. Um, does anyone have any questions that I can answer um, in 
you can type it in the chat pane. I'm, I would love to, to answer any questions anyone can come up with. Um, okay, I don't see any questions just yet. Okay, cool. So we will move on to finding reversals. Um, this is a, this has been a strategy that I've um, that I've adapted to, and I absolutely love trading. Um, we will go look at Goldman Sachs. That's that's something that I've, I absolutely, that chart is phenomenal for any bear trader out there. Um, on the daily, on Goldman Sachs, um, I plan on, on it pulling back to maybe this area right over here, and then po possibly rolling over. Um, but I am still in this bearish. Um, I've been in bearish um, ever since this support got broken. So ever since this gap down happened, um, I've been in with puts. So I'm looking forward to um, making some, some decent gains on these guys. Uh, my target on it is around the 300 range. And I have had that target due to the fact that the weekly chart has some sort of a gap range over here around 300 range. So my target on it is it's more around 300 and my puts, I've, I've had them um, for about, for about two weeks now. And, um, they expire six months out. Um, this was a chart I was a little bit skeptical about. And so I decided to buy them a little bit further out. Um, and again, you, you just, I, you know, you just look at a chart and you assess how far you really truly want to go. I typically tend to buy them three to six months out. And sometimes I will buy them a year out. Um, on Peloton, we swing traded this as a group. Um, And this is the weekly chart and we swing traded this as a group. And this is also a phenomenal example of a bull candle closing below the 10 EMA. And you would buy puts at least three to six months out. In this scenario, you would have been pretty happy if they were six months out. Um, Peloton is something that's just, it's just been beat down pretty, pretty badly. Um, I was, truly, truly hoping for a retracement of this head and shoulders pattern um, to come in. But I, I don't think Peloton's even lucky enough to, to have that. Um, it's just been beat down so, so badly. So yeah, this is something that we swing traded together as well. Um, and it, it works the other way around too, guys. So for, for bull traders, um, the first candle that closes the first red candle that closes above the 10 EMA, you go long above that. And if you're a true swing trader and you wanna, um, you wanna buy calls or shares, um, you know, for at least six months or larger holds, this strategy works phenomenally well on the weekly chart. Um, you could do this on daily chart. You could do this on um, hourly chart. It works on every every time frame. Um, and that's typically how I find my reversals as well. Um, that's when I typically tend to exit my trades and find my reversals as well. So um, yeah, Peloton is, is another one that we've swing traded together. Um, but guys, that was the, these are the tickers that I've, I've had on my, on my chart for a while. And if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer um, questions, comments. Um, we have a um, wonderful, wonderful futures trading room. If anyone here is a futures trader, um, we absolutely love trading futures and discuss them all day long. We have a live futures trading room as well as a Slack channel um, 
that we provide swing trades on swing trading ideas, day trading ideas, um, credit spreads, and and lots of other fun questions, remarks, um, trade setups, and and other things. So yeah, so if anyone is interested in it and would like to check it out, um, we are at, I'm going to type it in the chat pane, but we are at www.reallifetrading.in. And I would love to get to know some of you guys um, and, and see what, what setups you guys take, what trades you guys take. Um, and explore the market together. In the end, we're all in here to to kind of to kind of learn the 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 analysis and the, the technicalities of, of these of these mark of these complicated, tricky, tricky markets. So yeah, if anyone has any questions, I'd love to answer. If not, I will wrap it up here, guys. Okay, can you look at AMD and NVIDIA? Um, do you have the 10 EMA only on the weeklies or other timeframes? Let me go back to this, I'm sorry about that. Okay, okay, so let's get back to AMD. All right, so on AMD, um, and this is the daily chart, this is not a fun looking chart, but AMD has not been beat down just as bad as some of the other tickers that we've seen, that we've explored. Um, and guys, when I say I enjoy bear trading, I enjoy bear trading really intraday all day long. And that's all that I, I tend to look for. That's all that I'm fascinated by. And and I am I'm in, bear trades heaven right now. It's just wonderful. AMD has been phenomenally well. So on AMD, we do this, we do this, we do this strategy where um, we tend to, to put our targets a dollar above um, and for a day trade and a stop a dollar below. And AMD works really, really well for the, for that. Um, especially for smaller accounts, you can buy larger chunks of shares, you can buy, um, you know, multiple calls and puts. And, and so it's worked out really well. AMD in, in general, if I were to just kind of analyze it for you guys, I do think that it could pull back up to here again. This does look like a wave, some sort of a wave three to me, another wave four, and then another roll down um, around 100 is where I'd be a buyer of AMD for sure. Um, there is, you know, there is a massive demand um, for AMD and, and less supply. So I don't think this is a company that's that's gonna struggle necessarily. On the weekly chart, it also doesn't look as bad as some of the other tickers, but I, I do like this. So if I were to just look at it just simply as a bear trader, um, I do love this trend line break on it. So maybe a retest of it. Um, and by then, hopefully the 10 EMA should come and touch the trend line as well. So maybe a retest to the, uh, to the 10 EMA and then a roll back down over. So here's another fun weekly green candle and you buy puts below it. So last week was the week to go bearish on AMD and buy puts. Um, like we talked about, this is not a chart that I would buy puts a year out of. This does not look very scary to me. And so I would maybe do six months to three months, depending on how much risk you want to take and how far you want to go. But um, also guys, I tend to buy my puts in the money. Um, I don't go too far out the money, which is why I can afford to buy them at, you know, in, at three months and six months um, versus me having to buy them a year out or, or even leaps for that matter. So, yeah, um, those are my thoughts. This trend line broken on AMD is kind of scary. Um, I do know that if we take this candle out, this hammer candle out, um, we're gonna go fill this gap on AMD right away. 
this candle is holding it all together right now. Um, so unless we get that wave up, come back down and fill this gap, that would be great. If we fill this gap right away, then we might have to have to wait for that wave four and then we might roll back down a little bit lower, guys. I think this is a wave three of some sort. And again, for those of you that are Elliott Wave fans, um, no one knows how long wave three lasts. So if this is the end of wave three, it would be best for AMD. Um, and we go up to do a wave four and then come back down to 100 range. That's where I would look to add a few shares of AMD for sure um, for my long-term hold. Um, there was another one, there was NVIDIA that somebody requested. These are great questions, guys. NVIDIA. Um, so this guy on the on the daily is clearly it's it's pretty bearish right now. Um, when we looked at AMD, it didn't look like this. It looked a little bit different. Let's go look at it on the weekly. And and if it, and all of this completely depends on your time frame too, guys. How long are you are you wanting to be in this trade? Um, Nvidia also has this trend line that it broke. And I'm not sure um, if we go back up and retest it, but on NVIDIA, realistically, the 50% retracement off this run up. So I wanted, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk to you guys about that. So this run up um, is measured from somewhere over here, the fibs. Okay, and so everybody that bought over here, if you imagine just 50% of the people taking their profits, um, we would come down to 195. Again, I'm not saying that could happen overnight, but it definitely could. I'm, I'm definitely thinking that it, it could come back to 195. Um, this is a good level of support as well around 195 region. So that's where I would look to go long and maybe add to my positions. The way I tend to swing trade is I would like to get in on a fib, especially on the weekly chart. So I would like to get in on a fib and then exit a fib above. Um, unless these are really long-term, long-term holds that I'm just never gonna touch um, and, accumulate, and accumulate these shares. Unless it's meant for that, I tend to swing trade them somewhat like that. So I think that maybe we come, to, come back to 195, pull up here. And if we are starting a, a bear market or bearish trend, on NVIDIA, then this level could act as resistance for sure. It's acted that way previously. Again, you know, we only got these fibs on post this resistance, but um, it's acted previously as a resistance, so it could act as a resistance over here. And then maybe we could come back to 618. Um, we've been through such massive bull runs that people find it hard to believe that these pullbacks could could even occur. So I definitely think that we could have we could definitely come come across 195 and then see where we go from there. Um, I had another question. Do you only use the 10 EMA on only the weekly or other time frames? Okay, so that's a great question. You can use the 10 EMA, as a matter of fact, on the five minute chart and it works like magic every single day. Um, when I'm day trading it, we typically use them for um, on a three minute chart. And so here's a wonderful example of a bear candle closing above the 10 EMA. And so that's above this candle is where you wanna go bullish. And I mean, this would have worked out really well. Now, one may ask, where's your stop? My stop usually goes one pivot level below. So here's where my stop would be. And, and you know, in hindsight, everything's super easy. You could look at it and say, oh, this is where I would have entered. This is where I would have exited. But this strategy has been working phenomenally well. Um, if you are a much more patient trader and you don't like the smaller time frames, the 15 minute works super well with the 10 EMA as well. Um, great example, great example. Um, you could have gone long over here on NVIDIA. 
um, above the 15 minute chart, about the 15 minute candle, and then could have targeted over there. Um, I tend to take profits um, based on how much I have risked. So if I have risked um, from 209 to, if my stop is somewhere over here and my entry is over here, then my target has to at least give me that similar risk to reward. Um, and so I tend to take profits accordingly. Again, now when I'm trading it on a smaller time frame, um, my stops are much smaller, my targets are much more closer, so it, it becomes a little bit easier. But if you, 15 minute chart could work phenomenally well for swing trades as well. If you're into just one to two days worth of swing trades, this is a great, great strategy to try out. Um, um, here's another example. Well, this wouldn't, wouldn't have worked as much, but um, tomorrow, if for whatever reason we're acting a little bit weak, and we open somewhere over here, I would look for a pullback to this candle on the 15 minute and then maybe look for a rollover down to this range. Um, so yeah, it works on any, any time frame that you can come up with. Um, this guy right over here on the 30 minute or even the four hour chart. The four hour chart, I would plan on being in this trade for at least about a week or more. I wouldn't use the four hour chart if I'm just using, I'm just looking to get in and out of these trades. Um, do you, here's, how did you come to use the 10 EMA? Thank you for your info. Okay, so I traded with a wonderful group of people. Um, my mentor, Jeremy Newsom, came up um, with this strategy and introduced me to it. And I am, as a matter of fact, real life trading, um, the, the US side of my company is adapting to only the 10 EMA strategy for the rest of the year. So they're only looking to trade, looking to take trades based on the 10 EMA um, strategy. Um, for day trades on things like, um, let me give you an example. For day trades on Tesla, Okay, so we use, I typically like to use the three minute chart or the five minute chart um, for day trades. And, and imagine if we short a Tesla over here with a stop over here. Um, this is a 951, 930, this is a $20 range, which could have, which could have sufficed over here. Our target would have been met over here. This is a little bit later on in the day, but even early on in the day, um, here's a great example of a bear candle closing above the 10 EMA. And so then a stop probably would have been below this hammer candle and then just trail your stops accordingly. Um, you don't have to exit at, you know, as much as you've risked. You can just go on trailing your stops. Um, one good way to find a reversal in this is Okay, so let's say we're in this trade bullish from somewhere over here. We got filled, great, we're trailing stops. Now, I don't wanna see a green candle um, being taken out by a red candle below the 10 EMA. So this is not a good good example. I mean, this is not a good, good um, I guess, signal for me to be in this trade, for me to remain in this trade. In hindsight, I would have been wrong, but this is a sign of a reversal to me. And so I tend to exit my trades. I tend to trail my stops below the green candles. So somewhere below the 10 EMA and the green candles is where I tend to trail my stops to. Um, and you could do it again. You could get back in again. You could take it bearish. You could trade it um, bullish again. And so on a three minute, it's, it's you know quick in and out trades and it works really, really well. So that's, that's just something that we typically trade on. Um, if you're looking on the daily on Tesla, this day would have been the day to buy your puts or even this day below this candle. Um, you would have been still profitable even if you bought it three months out. Yes, you would have to endure some chops, chop, choppiness in the market, but um, 
if your stop is over here, you can you can be flexible with your contracts and buy them longer term. You can definitely do this um, strategy. Um, Tesla tends to be a little bit more expensive um, for options, especially farther swings, farther out swings. Here's a great example on Shopify. Shop weekly. There we go. That's the day you want it to go bearish on shop. Um, now, what I'm hoping for, guys, um, especially in the broader market on SPY and the Qs, what I'm hoping for is that we, we do this, we reclaim the 10 EMA as a wave four, and then come back and close below the 10 EMA with one bull candle. That's where I would look to get in short. That's my plan on SPY. Um, I've exited all of my SPY puts um, as, of, as of yesterday. So my plan on SPY is that we go up a little bit here, reclaim the 10 EMA, and then look to roll over. And we may see one green candle, just like maybe this one, and go bearish below it for a wave five down. Um, that's my plan. Realistically, I would like SPY to pull back to 400. Will it happen? I'm not too sure. Um, but realistically, that would be a really decent pullback to kind of to give us a lot more opportunity to go in long on some of the long on some of the things that, have, that we've all been waiting to buy. Um, okay, I think I had a, I saw a few more questions. Where do you see GDX going from here? Let's go back and look at that real quick. Is this the ticker you wanted me to look at? Um, okay, all right, well, if this was the ticker that you want me to look at. Sure, I can I can definitely look at it. Um, so I do see this is a weekly chart and I see this trend line happening. Um, I wouldn't want to be bullish on this unless we break out of this trend line. Um, so if you have existing shares, um, use the 10 EMA strategy to hedge yourself a little bit better. Um, this does look like I wouldn't want to go bullish on this just just yet unless we break this trend line or or this channel altogether. Um, it's trading in a channel, and I would just leave it alone for as long as I can. Um, we could put some fibs on it and see how much it's retraced, um, and see where we can go from it. Okay, so it's it's pulled back to its 50% retracement for sure, and we're sort of hovering around that range. So this is a tricky, tricky range. This is where everyone else is deciding if if the new buyers are going to come in and we go higher, or if we're going to go down for one more push down to the 618 level. I like to buy things at the 618 level, or love to buy things at the 1618 level. Um, on certain stocks. So um, this is a weekly chart, so it may take for it may take a while for it to pull back down to the 618. But if it did, 27 realistically could happen to it. Um, if we bounce from here um, and 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 break out of this channel, then by all means, I would be bullish in it. Um, I would just wait for a retracement down to this channel. And then maybe go look to go long on it. Um, those are just my thoughts, guys. Um, I have another. Do you post your live trades on your Slack channel? Yes, yes. Every trade I take, um, I post it on my Slack channel. Um, we take a lot of futures trades as well. And and if you guys. Our futures traders, um, I trade a lot of options on futures and um, contracts. So I tend to I tend to trade ES a lot more 
than NQ, but I, you know, we trade all, all sorts of instruments, yes. But every trade we take is is live and it's shared on Slack. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, definitely take a look um, and um, see if it's, if it's worth it for you. Um, I strongly believe in, in educating others in the stock market rather than just saying, hey, buy this, buy that. Um, I, I happen to be one of those people that just, they just believed in just somebody saying buy this, buy that, and then got stuck a lot of times in the stock market and decided to change that mentality completely. And, and so here we are again. Um, on it. So yeah, I, I definitely believe in educating. Real life training has a million, a gazillion videos on YouTube um, that are all for free. Um, our website is phenomenal. We've got lots of free resources, trading journals, um, beginner's guides, um, trade setups, um, trading plans. So do check out our website. It's, it's just it's, it's got lots of resources, anything a new trader or, or an advanced trader may need, um, it's out there. And it's all for free, guys. Um, feel free to come check us out. Yeah, um, so we, we do a lot of live futures callouts. We do a lot of live day trading callouts. My favorite ticker to day trade is, of course, Tesla. And, and we have a lot of fun with it in the room. So yeah. Um, Apart from that, I do also um, include some of the Indian tickers, and, and I'm not sure if anyone here is interested in that, but, um, but that's also another thing that we offer. So if you're using interactive brokers, you can also take trades on the Indian, Indian market. Um, so yeah, uh, I just pulled up the futures chart and just sent out a video tonight on the YouTube channel. Um, about a possible day trading idea tomorrow. Um, I love this inside candle close. I do think that we did close with a little bit more weakness than, than I would have liked. Um, we, did as, we did know and assume that it was going to be an inside candle for today. Um, there is still a lot of uncertainty out there in the markets regarding tomorrow's meeting. And what a phenomenal day for, for us to meet today um, and me being a bear trader. So anyway, so I my plan on it tomorrow um, on ES or SPY for that matter, um, ES is the future side of SPY. So on it is that if we take out this candle to the bull side, I will look to trade it bullish to the 10 EMA and with that being my target. And if we take this out to the bear side, then the sky's the limit. Um, I don't think that we should take out this hammer candle anytime soon. Um, the risk to reward obviously is more on the bear side than the bull side. I don't think that we should really, really take out this candle at all anytime soon. And if we do, especially if we do tomorrow, with it being that recent, it might not be too fun. Um, Microsoft is the one, I'm sorry guys, I have to show you this. Microsoft is the one that took that candle out. Um, I'm not sure why my trading view won't tell me where it is post market. Um, I'm not sure, but when I was doing the video in the evening, it was somewhere around 270 um, right after earnings. So I'm not sure why it's not saying where it is right now. But anyway, wherever it is, if it, if it opens below this hammer candle, that is not a good gap on Microsoft at all. So I would definitely keep an eye out. However, it is a retest gap. So I, M Microsoft is a company that's got a huge fan following. And I mean, who doesn't know about Microsoft? So we may get a little buying initially, go fill that gap and then maybe look to roll over if there's turmoil in the market tomorrow. Um, so that's my plan on, on, on day trading it. If we open below this candle, we'll get a little bit of buying and then look to short it around that range. That's just the way I think that this could plan out. Um, again, a lot of things could change between now and tomorrow morning at, at open. So 
we shall see. Um, just getting started on futures. Can you tell us more about the futures room, please? I believe you said you had a live room. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we have a live room where we meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I am looking to add a few more days um, where we pretty much teach anyone, if you've never traded futures before, um, we trade futures together. I teach you guys exactly what futures are, what the concepts are, et cetera, et cetera. And then we take trades together. Um, we meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays at, from eight to nine in the morning. And that time frame usually tends to work out really well for a few day trades um, in the futures. And, and how fun is it if you can just start your day with your daily goal being met um, even before the stock market opens? Um, that usually makes it really fun for some of my future room traders. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun and, and it's not very serious guys. Um, one of the things I, I loved about, about real life trading was that it's, it's not a bunch of, and, and I hate, I hate to use this analogy and I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm offending anyone, but it's not a bunch of, you know, um, elderly gentlemen that just, just scream at you and say, how do you not know that? I mean, you know, make you feel a little silly. Why do you not know what futures are or whatever? It's, it's very, we're very humble. We're very down to earth. We joke around a lot. Everybody participates a lot. Our Slack channel is filled with people. Um, if anyone has questions on options or hedging or whatever it is, it's just, it's just a wonderful community that we have out there. Um, everyone's super helpful. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, if you would like to check that out, that is also on our website um, at www.reallifetrading.in. So feel free to check us out. That would be a lot of fun. We definitely would love to see you. Um, Daniel says, Microsoft final was at 292. So would you go long above the long-legged green candle? Hey, great question, David. That's awesome. Okay, so I did not see that, but okay, cool. So if it is at 292, then yes, 100%. If we take out this inside candle tomorrow, so on Microsoft, what I see is the RSI is kind of low. A lot of people have been shorting it. So if we open actually above this candle or hover around in this range for a little bit, and then take this candle out, I would most definitely go bullish on it. Yes, 100%. And then the 10 EMA would be my target. Um, typically that tends to act as resistance. Tomorrow may be a special day where it does not, um, just like this one. So I would just kind of trail stops really, um, really tightly around this range and keep an eye on it. Um, and yeah, and make that my target. Yes, 100%. If we open above 294, or if we take this candle out to the bull side um, intraday, then 100% I would trade it bullish. Yep. Great question. That was a phenomenal one. Yeah. Yeah. When I was looking at it, it got, it got dumped a lot. And then um, right at right around four when the earnings came out. And when I was looking at it, it, it came down to 270-ish. And so I thought, oh my God, if this hammer candle is out, we are going lower on it. Um, just like Netflix, a lot of people actually um, in my group said, in our Slack channel said, is now a good time to buy on Netflix? Um, for even, you know, for a day trade, great, but to add long-term shares, I think Netflix has a little bit more to go down. Um, that day with the gap down was not the day to add long-term shares to Netflix, um, off Netflix to your account. Um, it just, there's just been so many people over here. Um, and imagine if you are a long-term holder on Netflix, hoping that we're going to bounce off of the support right over here. And then you open your day and your accounts and, and you know, it's, it's down $100. That's a little scary sight. The first thing everyone that's been bag holding over here or over here for that matter, that said, okay, well, it's at a good decent support level, we're gonna go higher, is going to freak and sell, is gonna panic sell. 
so yeah, that was the plan. I do think that Netflix has a little bit lower to go. It's it's at an interesting spot right now, though. Um, the RSI is really low on it. Um, I remember when that drop happened, and immediately I looked at the RSI, and the five-minute RSI at one point was at two. That's the lowest RSI I've ever seen on Netflix. So yes, yeah. Um, I wouldn't really be be any any overly excited to add Netflix shares. I do think that we can go test the 10EMA and then roll back down one more time. Um, and then that's when I would look to add um, long-term shares. Wave count wise too, guys, this this you know this seems like a wave three. So wave count wise too, it, it would make all the sense for it to pull back up and then roll back down one more time. Um, Wave five actually doesn't have to be too, too long. So when I say roll back down, it doesn't have to roll back to 240 or 280, but it could roll back down a little bit lower. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, but that's what I thought that Microsoft could end up doing um, if we opened below that hammer candle. Just my thoughts. Yep, but then to the bull side too, looks, looks amazing either way. What is that indicator called on the chart with the gap, please? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me show you. So the gap indicator, um, I came across it on TradingView. It's called Gap Snake 5. And it's a really cool one. Um, just gives me all the open gaps, which is nice. Um, so yeah, it's called Gap Snake 5. And, and it, does that, it, it does that on all time frames. So even the 15 minute. It'll show you the gaps that are that are open, technically. So, yeah, I rely very heavily on gaps, um, especially for my day trades. So, gap ups tend to usually act as resistance, um, just like one may see in this scenario, and gaps on the bottom tend to act as support. So, one may see in this scenario, and then if we tend to if we take the gaps gap down out then they act as resistance again, so to the top side. So yeah, I tend to, I tend to rely a lot on gaps, um, the 10 EMA, FIBS, and, and RSI. Those are my favorite indicators. Does anybody have any, any other questions? What other indicators do you generally rely on? Jay, did I answer your question? So, so I love using FIBS. Of course, um, it gives me a realistic target, um, especially on day trades. So let's go back and look at um, AMD. Okay. So when I was a new trader and didn't really understand where um, stops and targets, stops I got, I, I understood that fairly quickly, but where my targets should go was always a concern. I just never really got the hang of that. And so I typically would, um, my mentor introduced me to fibs and I typically would go put the fibs on. So on the previous day's candle. So on this day, um, on AMD, we were kind of weak around the 1618 range. And I knew if that range gets taken out, we're going to 2618 range. And, and we literally did exactly that. If I, if I were to adjust the FIBS to the T, it literally did exactly that, went to the 2618 range and came right back up. So let's say you don't like trading bearish. Um, or you have long-term shares of AMD um, that you don't want to let go of. Well, this is a fun little day trade with calls or puts either way. So once the 1618 level got taken out, you hoped that it would come back and reach and touch this line, which it did. And once it did, I definitely knew we were due for a bounce. Um, so AMD was a really fun day trade for my team on that day we actually treated it bullish um rather than bearish um at open a lot of things just kind of happened to flush at open really quickly on that day so yeah so that's that's 
was something that I, I absolutely rely on every single day. Um, fibs are something that I rely on um, for day trades. Um, once I have, so on Tesla, let's go back and remove these fibs. So on Tesla, I will take you guys to the five minute chart and zoom out just for one second guys okay so once i have an established high and a low on a ticker i will put fibs on that so let's look at a 15 minute chart it might be easier to do that okay so let's say you're trading tesla on on this day and you would you would assume that this is the high and the low. Um, clearly it's not, it went a little bit higher, but you would assume this is the high and the low. Um, within the first 15, two 15 minutes, we got that range. Now, if we wanna say, hey, my stance on Tesla based on the daily chart is still bearish, but I missed this run down and I wanna get look to get in on Tesla for a bear trade, where would I get in? This level. The, the 786 or the 236 ranges are amazing to look for reversals. These ranges work out amazingly well. So imagine if you wanted to short Tesla and you missed this run down and you said, okay, I'm gonna wait for a retracement and you shorted, you had an order over here and you shorted your shares of, I mean, you shorted Tesla over here for a day trade, for a quick day trade. I like to take my targets two FIB levels down, so one, and two somewhere over here. Um, you don't have to. You could wait and trail your stops and maybe hope for a lower low um, short. But I like to be in and out of my trades um, fairly quickly. So yeah, fibs work really, really well on any time frame. So I use that a lot. And then I use um, um, I use RSI just to kind of gauge what's going on um just because of this i don't really want to go bearish on on tesla over here on the next candle um i want to give give it some time to adjust a little bit more before i i look to go bearish um i use the gaps a lot and then i use the 10 ema yeah but besides that i don't really use anything anything too out of the ordinary. Um, sometimes I'll look at the Weave app. Um, sometimes I'll look at the TTM squeeze. That's that's worked out really well lately. So sometimes I'll look at that, but not always. I don't make my my decisions based on any of those indicators. It's mostly just fibs and, and trend lines and RSI and the 10 EMA. Yep. Um, very helpful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. Try it out, um, Jay. The, the fibs are phenomenal on, on any time frame. You could do it on an hour, hour long time frame. So um, this is the bear run and you're saying, okay, well now we're going to end this bear run and we're going to go bullish a little bit. Um, cool. Great. Put fibs on it. And realistically, how high can we go? This is the 628 range. So if we reclaim this territory, um, I would put my target two FIB levels higher, somewhere over here. Of course, we can go a little bit higher than that. Um, we are making, I don't really wanna say <laughs> lower highs, uh, I mean, higher highs and higher lows, but, but technically it looks like we are. So just an assumption that this is the end of this run, sure we could go a little bit higher um, just based on that fact. So yeah, so if I were to look to enter this trade over here on the bullish side, then I would move my target somewhere over here at 1030 um, or even at the 618 range, but I tend to take my profits at two levels higher. Yep, works on all time frames. Anybody else have any questions? Um, somebody said, what are your thoughts on Roku? I'm just gonna quickly answer that and then uh, take off. 
But if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me that. I would love to answer. Um, Roku has been um, our group's favorite stock to look at every single day. So when we have a bear day in the market where I sense a little bit of weakness, um, we have this we have this say in our in our group um, in our Slack channel: pick on the weakest kid on the block, um, and that is. Roku and Zoom for a day trade or a swing trade for that matter. Um, it just does not look look great on by any means. It's just got so many gaps open to the top. And, and yes, the R size is low. It could reverse and maybe go a little bit higher, but I don't ever think, I don't think that Roku is going to go to its 2020 highs in in 2022, it's 2021 highs in 2022. I don't think that we are going to reclaim those highs. Um, unless of course something changes or acquisition happens or you know things around the company changes. But yeah, um, that's just my thought. If you have long-term shares on Roku, I would, I would say hedge yourselves. Um, right now may not be the best time to hedge. Um, wait for a little bit longer. Um, maybe when Roku pulls up to 260 range, then maybe look for a rollover or hedge yourself around that area. Um, protect yourself with some puts. Yes, but I do not have any long-term holds on Roku and I don't, I'm not a big believer um, in this chart at all right now. Um, anyone else have any questions? Um, what about Docu, says Singh. Okay, cool. Let's go to Docu real quick. Hey, okay, awesome. So DocuSign is also another one that has been that's been struggling on the daily chart. Now, guys, there there's a difference between DocuSign and AMD when we look at the charts. And and I really want you to I really want you to take a take a deeper look. Um, AMD does not look like this. This is a scary, scary gap down on DocuSign. Um, will it fill? Um, sure, it could, but gap ups typically tend to act as resistance. Um, and, and if you guys want to know why, you, you know, imagine everybody that's been bag holding DocuSign over here, everybody that's been buying over here. Imagine if we have an, a swing a little bit higher. Imagine if we go a tiny little bit higher. What is that one person that's been holding DocuSign since January, 2021 going to do when he or she can finally break even? Um, they are going to sell. A lot of this sideways consolidation is going to sell if they've been bag holding, um, if they haven't already gotten out. So I do think that DocuSign actually has a little bit more lower to go. Um, this also is another scenario where, you know, pick the weakest kid on the block, and this happens to be the weakest kid on the block right now um, to pick for shorts. So um, let's put some fibs on it and see where it's hey, at. Uh, Alani, uh, sorry yes. to have to cut you off here, but we're... we're no, you're uh, fine, you're fine. Oh, I'm sorry about right. that. I didn't even look at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But thank you so much. Yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, a lot of good info. So I, I didn't want to cut you off, but uh, no, absolutely. Uh, we have we have one final presentation after you. You you were you were going to be the uh, uh, the last presentation of the uh, event, <laughs> so so normally I would have just let you go, but uh, we have we have we had to change the schedule around a bit, so we have one more after you. No so so. No problem but, at all, uh, David. Thank you. It was so much fun. I absolutely yeah. loved it. Yeah, it was great having you here. So, thank you for, thank you for, for being here. Yeah. 